and having to defend potentially cheesy play in the top right hand corner of Expedition Lost. The Purple Protoss player represent nobody but himself. It is Bradadaya. Going for what seemed, I think it was a 14 gate or a 15 gate, and then going right into gas as well. Sending his probe across the map, getting a decently early scout around 2.30. Not going to see much craziness out of Baby Puncher, who's gone, gone ahead and taken a gas, as well as getting her racks up. I'm going to build a wall, so... Maybe just getting a little bit of extra protection. Um, it's not it's not too necessary to build it against Protoss. The only reason you would really need it is if you're expecting something crazy or if uh, you wanted to hide tech. Um, so we do have a Marine coming out for her as well as the Orbital Command getting started up. Um, Brad and I face a little bit of a, uh, you know, just kind of wondering what's going on and not much should be a get dead giveaway. The only things right now that he would actually be able to notice if it was going down, you know, of course, if a barracks is missing, any sort of proxy, but right now he sees the Marine pop out, Orbital Command, nothing too crazy, so no reason for him to be that worried. Um, and she does have a, uh, so I've heard, she's got a, um, I guess you could say, a penchant for the, for the cheap. A dupe, dupe, dupe. All right. There's a guy down, back in the game. Marines on the way, and there's a factory. I don't think the factory's been scouted. Um, yep, nope, it has not from uh, the Protoss player. Um, what's his name, Babadiah? Yeah, Brad Bradadiah. So uh, it hasn't been scouted by the Protoss player, and uh, that means that he does not know what he's up against just yet. One of his probes is making his way up across the top side of the map, and we might see um, a forward pylon or maybe a stargate it would be a, a little bit late but this marine is checking around the bottom start of the map to uh make sure there's no stargates that way but there might be a stargate up here in the upper part of the uh of the map um basically where the marine's not looking so that marine is going to go take a zell naga tower but this is one of those deals where we have marauders with concussive shells coming in for our Terran player, Baby Puncher, as well as an engineering bay going down. So maybe turrets going in the middle line, uh, which would deal with um, the starport that might be going down. It might be, um, you know, a, a Twilight Council into a Dark Shrine. This might be just a Ford Pylon, but as of right now, we're not seeing any indication of Bradadaya that he's going to do anything but take an expansion. So he's going right to his natural. Meaning, well, uh, Baby Puncher's just producing marauders. Concussive Shell's just finished up as she scans the main just to check, see what she can see. Um, the big tell here, of course, is that there's not a bunch of gates. There's not like a robotics base and no immortals of just yet unless the uh, robotics bay was on the low ground, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you want to protect that. So Baby Puncher, if she knows her game knowledge, knows that two widow mines and a marauder coming out are probably going to be able to get some business done. So this is looking pretty similar to what's called the hammer build. And the hammer build um, is where you pressure fairly early on with marauders and widow mines. It's a little late for uh, for that exact build, um, but it is uh, going to hit sometime because she's not, she's not expanding, so she needs to do something with it as that marine is going to go ahead and check and to see what it can see. So three marauders, two widow mines, concussive shells is the upgrade on that tech lab. Two more marauders coming out of the factory, going to push across the map here, see what they can do. Sentry on the way for our Protoss player as that probe gets spotted, and it's going to spot the marauders as well. So I don't know if he saw all of them, but he knows something's up, and that is indeed a robotics facility. So proxy immortal? Pro I don't know what type of build that's going to be. Maybe he's just trying to hide tech that doesn't really make sense, but I mean, we'll see if he can make something work. Proxy marauder... Or, Immortal, uh, you know, it is it is a thing apparently. So um, these widow mines are sticking outside the natural. Just two centuries of stock in a mothership core. Photon overcharge. He's going to have to get pulled as these marauders come in. Of course, um, they're going to start going to work on the nexus. But that force field's going down onto the uh, widow mines. The widow mines burrow and get one probe. So that shot doesn't really do as much as it was intended to do. And the photon overcharge has done its job and given the Protoss player enough time to maybe buy a little time to survive. Meanwhile, an immortal on the way. Uh, as well as the starport, no expansion yet for Baby Puncher, so not going to see him going or her rather going into the economy that pretty soon. Uh, and what pr pretty smart thing is he's just sending one probe over the top of these widow mines, making sure they're not detonating on sentries. And if Baby Puncher doesn't go ahead and unbro those or target, then they're going to go ahead and fire on the pro toss uh, probe there. And that's not going to be what the widow mines are intended to do as they wait for this photon overcharge to stop, of course. Um, and uh, it's still cooking and it seems like it takes forever sometimes. There's a turret going down um, in front just to make sure that any observers are out here might not do their best. Uh, and that, more of that, Widow Mines going to be fired down too. We've got six Widow Mines too on a countdown timer. As these go right up into the map, force field sections out three of them. Only one gets in the main ramp, but those guys burrow. No more reinforcements coming down that side at least. 
as these Marauders and Marines start to go to work on this natural, and that natural is actually going to go down, and that's going to be a big loss for the Protoss player, uh, even though he does have Immortals. Maybe this is a bit of a fake out with the with the natural. Maybe he didn't actually want to keep it, but that was a massive Widowmine. Oh my god, that Widowmine just got eight kills. Every Stalker, all the sentries, and now these Widowmines and Marauders can just waltz right up into the main, and they start going to work. The one stalker is dead. It's just the mothership core. Massive detonations for the widow mines. There are only six workers left, and more widow mines burrow into the main, and that's about as dirty as it gets, and that's why everyone hates these widow mines. They are the DTs of the Terran race, and tell you what, there's no coming back from that unless these immortals can do absolute game-ending damage. Two of them coming out here, going to work on the ice rocks outside of Baby Puncher's main, but if you look at the production tab, there is none. There is nothing coming across for Baby Puncher. Meanwhile, Stim and two more widow mines on the way. This many widow mines, no observers on the way uh, anytime soon. It's going to be very, very difficult uh, as these sentries and two immortals make their way into the field of play. I mean, if, even if you got into a base trade scenario right now, um, it's not going to go in the favor of the Protoss player. He's starting to go to work on the tech lab at least. No more stim for you as these immortals and sentries work their way into the main. I wonder what Baby Puncher, Baby Puncher just decided she doesn't really care about what's going on in her main. That one of mine is going to be able to, nope, not going to be able to burrow. Immortals are going to go ahead and section off um, any sort of uh, harassment that's going to come towards their way. Of course, the Widowmine's not going to be able to one-hit an immortal just take away all of its shields. Um, the army coming back, all the Widowmines are going to go ahead and stay there. Um, but without the base, she's going to be... Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, Brad and I has not rebuilt their base and is being revealed, and he calls the GG. Um, that's GG coming back from Baby Puncher, and he's just kind of playing one-handed right now. It's a little bad move to call a GG and then not exit the game, but you know what? Uh, it's you know He's probably feeling the pain from being Murado Widowmind all in, so... There's the uh, game leave, and Baby Puncher from Chobo Team League 6 taking it one game at a time. And first game, Expedition Lost going heavily her favor. All right, lads and lasses, welcome back. It's game two of this quarterfinal match. It's a best of five series uh, between these two players, this TVP. And uh, we're going to go ahead right into these player introductions, spotting in the top right-hand corner. Currently down one game to zero, trying to bring it back. He changed his color even. It is the Teal Protoss player, Brad Adaya. And last game, he got maraudered and widowmined to the face pretty hard as he sends his probe out here to get some early scouting. And the person who was doing that widow mining and maraudering here in the bottom left-hand corner wearing the orange trunks representing Chobo Team League 6, the gold Terran player, Baby Puncher. I say gold because she's in gold league, if you didn't know. Um, playing the... the uh, Platinum Protoss, but it doesn't matter here as we saw in the first game as she took it pretty handily. Brad and I once again sending a decently early three-minute probe scout into the main. Baby Puncher actually going to be able to block it off, so Brad and I even more in the dark than he was compared to last game. Going to try and whittle down this SCV a little bit if he can. Nope, he's just going to maneuver it. There we go. Now the probe is doing what he was born to do, which is attack SCVs with a little uh, taser. Actually getting it down pretty low. It's good. Oh, very close. Didn't Probably didn't need to pull. Probably could have gotten it and then left, but the uh, five horsepower, five hit point um, SEV will live. And then we're going right into factory production for Baby Puncher. More of the same, maybe? We'll see. Uh, Marines on the way, as well as a Zealot coming from the Protoss player. Other than that, nothing too crazy. A pretty early Nexus from Bradadaya, which is a little uh, crazy if you ask me, as we've got a very similar build for Baby Puncher Tech Lab on her barracks, and she's going to continue to produce SEVs like a good little macro Terran. We've got an engineering bay as well, so she seems to be an enjoying the one base life, as it were. Of course, Mothership Core is pretty standard these days from the Protoss player, and he's getting one of those, as every good Protoss should. Baby Puncher going to go ahead and continue scouting with these Marines on the map. Going to probably try and take the Zelnaga Watchtowers as Bradadaya's probe is going to be in for a little bit of a hurt, and if he doesn't leave, there he goes. He's going to get away with his life at least. Um, concussive shells on the way and marauders as well as a stalker from Bradadaya, which means it's the same exact build in all likelihood coming from Baby Puncher. If it works uh, and it's not broke, don't fix it. More the same from her. And you know what? It is a fun and exciting build, so why not? Uh, and basically what this is is you make three uh, three marauders and two widow mines, and then you just kind of push. The scan going down to the main, realizing it's about the same as last game. Nothing too crazy. Standard 
um, from Bradadaya. Either he's hiding tech um, or he's taking a natural, and she will be able to confirm that once she steps up with um, her units. The Mothership core is in the middle of the, of the map, so might be able to see something coming. Baby Puncher is going to go ahead and throw down a safety turret here just for detection. Might be, uh, in, you know, might be predicting some DTs, something along those lines. Bit of a supply block for the Gold Terran at 27-27, the, uh, the infamous 27 uh, supply block. Stim on the way, so at least she's upgrading some more stuff before she does this push. It might be a pretty bad idea. Bradadaya is able to get his robotics bay out a little earlier, and this time in a better position closer to his base so those immortals aren't at least out of the team fight, which could have swung that last fight in the first First match in his favor um, if he'd had them back home instead of where they were, which was across the map, of course, doing basically nothing. The Robotics Bay has finished up, and it's likely going to be an Immortal if he's expecting the right things here. Stem on the way, but that's going to be a while before it even takes uh, into effect, let alone um, affects the game. Uh, Baby Puncher now finally out of her uh, supply block, and she's going to be making Metavax, Widow Mines, and waiting to get across the map. An early Robotics Bay, an early... Um, God, um, robotics facility and early uh, robotics bay. Sorry, I forgot what that word was for a little bit. Um, coming out, so Colossi, of course, is going to be the uh, answer to that. Now, this is the uh, the hammer push. If you don't know, that's the name of it officially. Um, and uh, the guy who came up with it is conveniently named Hammer. He was a Masters player, and he pulls this off at Masters level. So if you're having some trouble with Protoss and you want a cheap, easy, convenient way to maybe get some absolute game-ending damage done early on, at least to be able to transition into something that will continue to crush your opponent midway through the game, well, this is the build for you, as these two stalkers are going to find a Marine in the middle, but they're also going to see a Widow Mine. Those Widow Mines are not going to burrow. One of them does, and then the stalkers decide to hightail it out of their stem almost finishing up. It Will it make a huge difference in this fight? It might with the supporting medevac. Two more Widow Mines on the way and a Supply Depot making sure she's not getting any more Supply Block than she needs to. Bradadaya, 52-52 Supply. This is what you kind of see in these lower league matches. Two Widow Mines coming up as the probe gets shot by three Marauders. Three Stalkers now joining the fight. That's not going to be enough. See what Bradadaya starts to make as a Viking is making its way on the field as well. A Twilight Council just about to finish up. Not what you need, at least the Observers there. These two Widow Mines are going to go off on probes. Not the biggest in connection and Photon Overcharge is going to go off and take out the rest of those Widow Mines. The four Marauders are at least going to make it out with their lives. One of them does die from the Photon Overcharge, so a little crazy, a little telling here. Uh, the Widow Mines going up into the Medivac, and they're going to boost into the main of Bradadadaya, maybe try and drop them or position them right at the top of that ramp to eliminate any sort of uh, reinforcements, at least from a robotics facility or something along those lines as they go straight to the mineral line growing on each side. The probes are pulled to try and deal with them. Never a good idea because this happens. And that is why, as a Protoss player, you don't pull uh, probes to deal with Widowmines. That Widowmine is a sergeant already getting 10 kills. It doesn't matter because he did his job. Baby Puncher showing us why the Widowmine is referred to as the DT of the Terran uh, race. And that is just about as lucky as it gets and just about as awesome as it gets. No better feeling in the world than a Terran to see that many probes die with a single shot of a Widowmine. That's a lot of Marauders with some medevac support, but they're going to have to hightail it out of here, as well as the Widowmines is there as an observer in the field. Two observers in the field, Brad and I getting at least good vision of what's going on as he takes a decent supply lead. Just one, mind you. Now it's right back in the Baby Punch's favor. She has not yet expanded. She's staying with the one base play, um, keeping with the Chobo Team League 6. Um, strategy, I suppose, as it is. Vespasian tends to do a lot of the same things as a Marauder might give away his life for free. Instead, he goes ahead and stutter steps back as that medevac does what it was designed to do and heals. Uh, these We've got a couple of probes in the main mineral line not doing a goddamn thing, but that... Mm, okay, we got a raven along with the party to take care of some of these observers. Can also throw down a PDD if it need, gets enough energy for it uh, to take out that photon overcharge. There's a Colossus tech. Now we know it's out there. All the Widowmines are going to burrow, and the observers uh, kind of trying to get in the range of things. That goes down to the Widowmines, and instead of a uh, PDD, we have an auto turret. That'll take up a little bit of damage. They're going to try and target this Colossi, but instead of doing such a great job, the Marauders are all going to die. Um, and that wasn't what Baby Puncher wanted to see. This is a great hold from Bradadaya from a really intense position because, well, auto turrets and Widow Mines and Marauders, oh my, that's not the best thing that you want to see as a Protoss player, especially this early in the game. That Colossus went down to about the lowest of the low. Six health, five health. Yeah, down with three kills, though. So not the... Ooh, that would have mind making its uh, mark on the Protoss shields of that Colossi. But 
Um, we're in a bit of a pickle now for Baby Puncher, and she's decided to take the gold. That's the big move from her. She is moving onwards and upwards, and we'll see if this is going to actually be able to do anything as those Widow Mines are finally going to be cleaned up by this Colossi here. Saber was remarking earlier in the break before this game that the way you deal with Widow Mines is you take straight to Colossus, and Bradadia seemingly a... a uh, is uh, what what what's one of those things where he could he could see the future? He can hear other people's thoughts. He's one of those guys. He's a, he's a seer. Um, he heard Saber's thoughts through the uh, through the video game, and now uh, he's gone straight for Colossi Tech. It was a relatively early robotics facility, relatively early robotics bay, and with that extended thermal lance coming out, getting that range upgrade for the Colossi up to nine charge as well, and those things do pretty well against Widow Mines. The Zealots get right in on top of them quickly detonate and then of course Colossi there to clean him up at the end going up to three bases for Brad Adai he's at 83 supply feeling pretty comfortable um, this is exactly what you want to real feel as a Protoss player but on the other side of things Baby Puncher taking a bit of a risk going right for that gold and has not been scouted from Brad Adai. Uh we've got two medevacs picking up some units here we'll see if they can get any sort of damage done it's not going to be game ending by any means but if she's able to at least pull back the Protoss player now buy some time for her economy to get up and running she might be able to make enough damage for it to work. One medevac with uh, what seemed to be four marauders it looked like and uh, we'll see what other sorts of units pop out. We've got three colossi now entering the field with Brad Adai and he's getting to that healthy death ball that Protoss wants as dirty as Widow Mines are. Um, there's not any in this drop so it's just bio and Baby Puncher seems to be a little bit hesitant to send these the dropship in. Maybe wants to see what's really going on instead just boosts right in. He's gonna get on top of the mineral line going straight for the probes. Um, six, five marauders in here. They're just gonna no stim as of yet the photon of a charge is deployed um, and he's trying to she's trying to target down the nexus no she's not now she's picking up and getting the hell out of dodge not a bad move in my opinion and it did just enough to bradadaya to make him re uh, think his strategy right now took him away from his macro made him come back and deal with that pull probes and anything you can do of that nature without losing a lot of units is good um, here we are, and she unloaded those units so she could get the health back. But C Brad Adai has just been producing Colossus after Colossus, and he's got a really healthy field of them now, and there's not a lot of Vikings on the map. In fact, I only think there's one, and he's decided, you know what, enough is enough. Time to move across because, you know what, you've taken the gold. I've found you out, and uh, we're going to put a stop to this real quick. In fact, the blink forward from this blink stalker is going to start going to work on that command center, stutter stepping their way. The pickup is still coming from the medevac, though. The medevac re-picked up their units, going right back into the main. We'll see if we can force a recall uh, as we go back to check on. But there's no Mothership Corps that main army. So this is going to do some damage unless Mothership Corps deploys a Photon Overcharge quickly and readily. The probes are pulled, and uh, there is enough energy for a Photon Overcharge. So there it goes as Brad and I's Protoss army chills right outside of the gold base. But there's a lot of Marauders in this, and they're able to tank up a good amount of damage with the two healing medevacs. These three Marauders are now able to out-heal the Photon Overcharge. The Meta Mama Ship Corps needs to get in there. Now it's probes getting pulled to deal with the Marauders as the main army of Brad and I starts to go to work on the Supply Depot wall in front of the natural, now natural, the 16-minute natural baby puncher, and all the Supply Depot's going down early. There's not enough for Brad to die to deal with this. Getting caught out on the ramp is not the best place you want. The Colossi able to target a lot of those forces. Raven gets shot down full of energy, not going to be used for any of its potential. The Zealots are right working. All the SCVs are going to die. Now that you've got a lot of Zealots on top of you with Colossi in support doing what they do best, which is pew pew laser beams into your face, and that's GG call for baby puncher. Game two going to Brad die in convincing fashion. And you know what? As satisfying as that first win was for Baby Puncher, it is as satisfying as a defense for Brad die in the second map, proving he can deal with the unorthodox play style of his Terran opponent. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're on Dead Wing for this third match of the best of five series between these two players is TVP, of course, or PVT, depending on uh, what race you play. Um, spotting the bottom right-hand corner to get these player introductions started. Currently tied one-to-one, -one, tied it up last game after a really healthy Widow Mine drop Marauder defense. It is your Teal Protoss player, Brad Adaya. And his opponent in the top left hand corner, Dead Wing, of course, opposite spawns, so they're not going to find each other for some time. Currently sending out two SCVs, though, to get some probable cheese going on. It is representing Chobo Team League 6, the Gold Terran, representing the orange color, Baby Puncher. 
and that's exactly what's going down. Uh, checked the bottom base, noticed uh, that's not where Bratadaya was, and so now she's going to go ahead and build the racks here on the third, and it's going to be very close to getting scouted, and it's not. Just out of range of that probe, probe's not going to see it. These two barracks going down, and that spells danger. Uh, because all we've got coming for, from Brad Adai is a cybernetic score, and of course he print, went for a decently early natural last game, and we'll see if that's the case here, because he's only taken one gas, which likely means it will be an early uh, nexus on the low ground, or on the, yeah, on the low ground, rather. It's going to be three racks. We're going to go right into three racks marine production here. Um, and of course, Brad Adai is not going to know this for some time, because he's scouting vertically first and then diagonal, as you would anyway. Um, one barracks just about to finish up, and uh, Marine on the way. SCV coming in here for a scout, look around just to make sure she sees what she likes, and she sees the probe. And then she's not going to see it throw down the Nexus just yet, he doesn't have enough minerals, but he is going to throw down the Nexus. Um, and there's the bunker. Now Baby Puncher is letting Brad Adai know exactly what's up. It's either a bunker for a Reaper or something crazy going down. And you know what? Something tells me Brad Adai knows it's going to be something crazy as as uh, Baby Puncher is going to try and block out the pr this. That's great play. Oh, I love it. Now this there's nothing that she, he can do unless he pulls probes to deal with this. There's a Marine up here with um, the uh, the SEV building the supply depot right now. Mothership Core is going to make its way out into the map and might be able to shut down um, the bunker production at least targeting the SCV. Now the SCV is going to die, so not the best play out of her. She could have saved the SCV, but another one here, and of course another one building the third barracks. Uh, that Marine dies a little unnecessarily, but uh, more Marines making their way across the map from the, uh, the uh, proxy barracks here. Stalker makes its way into the fight, cancels the barracks, or the uh, bunker rather, and another Marine dies, so this actually looks pretty shut down. I'm going to go ahead and say that unless you keep your Marines alive in this early of a push, it doesn't make sense to do it at all. You need to keep those guys alive because you want to get a culminating mass of Marines. You want to get six or seven. She would have had six at this point in time. Of course, already lost three beforehand. And it's just not going to make... It just doesn't work. She says work by being as cost-efficient with your units as possible, and that's a bit not what Baby Puncher was. And unfortunately, she maybe missed... Uh, micro misclicked a little bit. Now she's got a healthy dose of Marines here, but six Marines can still be out microed by Mothership Core and a Stalker. It's uh, pretty incredible, but you can. The barracks, bunk, two bunkers rather, not barracks, are going right next to the natural. And of course, Brett and I knows what's going on, but he's probably got, he, he's patient enough. He doesn't really have to do anything right now. Poach never charge deployed Stalker coming in to go to work on these SCVs here. And Tell you what, that's about all you need to do at this point in time. More Marines joining the fight, but two Stalkers and the Mothership Core with Photon Overcharge, and it's not looking too good for Baby Puncher as Brad Adai takes a, or Brad Adai, pardon me, takes a 35 to 26 supply lead. A lot of Marines here. Supply Depot is just finishing up for Baby Puncher, so she is at least going to be able to pump more out, but this relies on surprise and keeping your individual uh, early units alive, and neither of those things were the case because the surprise was worn away as soon as she tried to make a wall at the top of the main. It was an interesting play, and I liked it at first, but come to think of it now, it's not looking like it was the best idea ever as uh, instead of focusing on her unit, management she focused on her building management and instead lost marines rather needlessly in the initial combat maybe still might be able to make it work but this is looking pretty rough um a, a mortal making its way onto the map i don't know if that's the best unit versus marines i would just keep pumping out stalkers if i were brad Adia, but of course he's the protest player not me scv is coming to join the action a little bit and maybe take a little bit of uh damage here from these stalkers there's a lot of marines coming in here and they might be able to do some damage now that is a pretty healthy dose of marines stutter stepping their way into the battle gonna go ahead and target down the mothership course so no more fortune overcharge and this is a big enough unit you've got to say go for it or don't go for it one stalker goes down now the immortal's gonna go ahead and enter the battlefield and baby puncher has to make something work now three more stalkers are getting warped in and that's gonna put a clamp down on it doesn't seem like it's gonna work but of course a flood of SEVs making their way across the map it's choo choo train Bring the boys, and we're going to try and make it work with mules, ladies and gents, and it's not going to work with mules. This is a, a lost cause. Unfortunately, Baby Puncher is not going to make this work. This is going to go down in flames, and I'm not trying to say that it's uh, there's a chance, but there's probably not a chance that these units are microed correctly. The Immortal get a little out of distance, though. Maybe doesn't want to use that, lose that unit so much. Now uh, that's a little low. Now the surround by the Marines and the Stalkers. Did I call this too early? I might have. 
That Mothership Gore definitely needs to stay alive. It needs to go away from those Marines. It's not. It's going to go down. These Baby Ones are making something happen. More Stalkers making their way into the battlefield. Those Marines are on pretty low health, though. Got to go ahead and get that, stalk that Zealot for free. Six Stalkers are going to go ahead and be able to one-shot Marines, of course. And they're, once microed correctly, can keep stutter stepping to infinitum. So that's about what happened. And these Marines' numbers have gone down to about 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's the GG call from Baby Puncher and Bratadaya. Successful in game three, taking a two to one lead over his uh, Terran opponent. Right into the player introductions of this PVT because something tells me some funkiness might be going down fairly shortly. So, spawning at the top part of Catalina, I suppose the one o'clock position, representing Chobo Team League Six, currently down one game to two. It is the Orange Terran Baby Puncher. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, it is the Teal Protoss player, Bradadaya. In the first uh, three games, Baby Puncher didn't really change up how she did. Came in with, uh, you know what, pretty much one base play. First two games, it was Marauder Widowmine. Third game, it was uh, three racks, proxy three racks, just Marine Rush. Uh, last two games didn't go in her favor. First one went absolutely in her favor. Um, and I think we're going to see a pretty, a little bit more standard game out of her this time. I say that, but I don't, I, I just mean standard for, for her type of play. Well, Bredadai is definitely already searching for any kind of cheese. Already sent his probe all the way down, scouting all over the place. And so far has not seen anything that he should be worried about. Yeah, and he's getting a Zala on the map now, of course, getting that one. Uh, across into some scouting positions as well. So any sort of early information Brad and I can get um, is good. And that goes for the case even if you don't know your player. Don't think that you don't have to do that sort of behavior um, on just regular latter days. But Brad and I is going to go ahead and send the Zealot right up to the top. Um, and this is actually a pretty common thing to send across a Zealot, a Stalker, and a Mothership Core because it turns out those are pretty good units. And they can actually do a little bit of damage here, but uh, the special tactics that we're seeing out of Baby Puncher is going to be a Ghost Academy. It's a one, it's a one base Ghost Academy, and the depot getting raised just in time for that Zealot to be met with two Marines, and they're going to start going to work on it. Um, that Ghost Academy is just about to finish, so one base Ghost play is going to be the answer out of Baby Puncher. Um, essentially, if if uh, a Ghost lands a pretty good EMP, it knows no more photon overcharge, so those Marines don't need to get caught out right now raising up the supply depot. Um, what do you think about the one base goes to Shaden? I think that if it's not scouted, I think it's going to be able to do some some significant amount of damage. But I mean, uh, once it's scouted, I think the better die is going to be able to hold just nicely. Yeah, and the mothership core taking some damage there, not in the shield, actually in the armor of the uh, the unit as this SCV comes up to repair the supply depot. And like I said, a stalker, a zealot, and a mothership core can actually cause a little bit of havoc. The stalker does go down, alleviating some of the concern. But four marines for some mothership core and two stalkers, the two stalkers will actually be able to stutter step um, into victory as that supply depot is just now saved, really close to going down there. As now the mothership core is going to start oh, working on it. The mothership core is going to go down. He's not careful. He does manage to save it, get it right out of range of those Marines. Now he doesn't have the best uh, vision. He has to throw down a time warp. He throws a time warp down. I'm not sure I agree with that. Needs you need the energy for a photon overcharge later on. But he really wants to get rid of that um, that supply depot and get his uh, stalkers up in here. One stalker does go down. SCVs are going to be pulled. He did actually kill two uh, SCVs in that, so I don't know if that's the most the. Gr blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the greatest thing in the world, but it does account for something. Yeah, anything in the early game, um, you know, is worth it, at least for uh, if you're going to put some time into it. You don't want to ever leave without having not accomplished anything as these uh, SCVs going to go ahead and start repairing Supply Depot and finish it up. Now we're going to go ahead and see Marauders and uh, not a Ghost in production yet. I just don't think she has the gas for it. Just 154 gas, of course. Ghosts need a bit... No, they need 100 gas and 200 minerals, but... Uh, now we have a... Nope, still no Ghost in production. So we built the Ghost Academy and then we're going to build Concussive Shells and STEM. Um, so going against Day 9's old adage there, if you build it, use it. No ghosts on the way just yet. Well, it did take him a long while, actually, up till just re just now to actually get more gas actually coming. So Baby Puncher wasn't able to have enough to do both. Yeah, and th I mean, that's where that's where the, the decision needs to be made, though, right? So as these two stalkers get caught out by 
the bio ball making their way across the map, and that is a pretty scary amount of Marines and Marauders, two Marauders in the mix. With concussive shells, you're going to be able to focus down the Stalker. It does actually manage to get away. But the, but of course, the decision to make the Ghost Academy came before the decision to make concussive shells and stem. Uh, concussive shells, of course, is only 25 gas. Stem is 100, though. So if you're going to waste 125 gas on some upgrade as opposed to building Ghosts, which is what the Ghost Academy is for, obviously, then you're um, not prioritizing your resources as efficiently as you could. It's a uh, photon overcharge going down. Got to be able to make these, this uh, bio ball go right back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely right, though. I mean, if you build, if you build it, you want to actually go ahead and use that building. And actually, I even uh, learned that same thing, not just from day nine, but back in the day with Wings of Liberty as well. Uh, SC2 Noob School even was really, really careful in pointing that out time and time again. Yeah, and just as we point out what you, uh, you know, SC2 Noob School, we've got an SCV train here. This is all in as it gets. So if Baby Puncher doesn't win this, of course, Bradadaya will go on. And this is her last game of the tournament. Um, this is not looking amazing. She's been a little bit supply blocked. She hasn't been able to keep up in terms of economy of Bradadaya. Bradadaya is going to do a Photon Overcharge, and an Immortal with two Force Fields should basically put a clamp right on this. He can even section out the army. The SCVs aren't in front right now. Force Field's going to go ahead and divvy up the army, and a lot of units in front are going to go down rather quickly. A lot of SCVs are behind those Force Fields where they're doing a whole lot of nothing. And there isn't actually enough energy for the Photon Overcharge. So he Ooh, may be able right. to accomplish something if he can actually kill that, and then and he does. Oh, wow. Yeah, Militia Corps going down. Pretty nice pickup there. SEV is going to go ahead and dance around right in front of this bio ball as well, getting in on top of the Stalkers. Uh, stalkers and Immortals stutter stepping back, but the Concussive Shells is actually making it pretty hard to do that. Baby Puncher is down to 24 supplies, so she's going to have to make this work, and if she doesn't, that's, uh, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, and they did pull all the probes. Yeah, probes are pulled, and they seem to be going down uh, by the wayfold as well. But remember, this is all Baby Puncher has left. He pulled almost all of his SCVs. He's got the rest of it of his supply tied up in Marauders. Of course, they take up two supply each, so three Marauders at six supply, plus two Marines and an SCV. So if this doesn't work, it doesn't work. Baby Puncher down to seven, five supply. Stalker's doing okay uh, for what it's worth. Now it's just Marines, one Marine left, and that seems to be it. Nothing else for Baby Puncher. In fact, that Marine is the last unit she has. This is uh, pretty much game over, but she's going to stay in it for as long as she can because uh, reasons. It's basically her last map, last game of this tournament. So, you know what? She's deserved to be here in the round of eight, so why not make something happen? She's not even pulling down any mules. There's the GG called Bradadaya taking game four in pretty solid fashion, and he's going to go ahead and qualify in the round of eight.